Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 29, Reading URLs. As some of you may already know, URL is an acronym that stands for Uniform Resource Locator, and it is often used interchangeably with the term web address. And indeed, for our purposes here today, the term URL will be equivalent to the term web address. One place where you will encounter web addresses is in the address bar of your web browser. It's helpful to be able to read web addresses because it's the only sure way to know which web page you're actually looking at. Take this login page for example. A criminal web developer could easily make a counterfeit copy of this web page and set it up to steal your username and your password. But although criminal web developers can copy the content of legitimate web pages, as we see here, they cannot copy the URLs associated with those web pages. That's because every web page gets a unique URL. So if you can trust a URL, then you can trust the web page that's associated with it. You will also encounter URLs whenever you hover your mouse pointer over a hyperlink anywhere in your web browser. For example, in Firefox, the URL associated with a hyperlink pops up in the bottom left corner of the browser window whenever you hover over a hyperlink. The browser is telling you that clicking on this link would be the same thing as typing this URL into your browser's address bar and clicking enter. Let's click on the link. We can see that clicking on the link navigates to the URL associated with the link. So it's a good idea to learn to read URLs so that you can tell where you're going before you click on a hyperlink. This is an important security skill because a lot of cyber criminals will try to lead you to illegitimate web pages through hyperlinks in emails or pop-up advertisements or that sort of thing. Let's go back to that login page and practice reading some URLs. When you're reading a URL, the most important thing to do is to find the domain name of the URL. Why, you might ask? Because if you can trust the domain name, then you can trust the web page. The domain name is the name given to a chunk of web space owned and controlled by some entity. Nobody but the owner of a given domain name can publish web pages using that domain name. So here's how you find a domain name. First, ignore the http colon slash slash bundle at the beginning of the URL. If all we're interested in is the domain name, then that bundle is irrelevant to us. Now begin at the far left of the remaining URL, and then scan over to the right until you come to a slash. Now count back two periods, one period, two periods. The material between the first slash and that second period back from it is the domain name. You may have noticed that my web browser, and in this case I'm using Firefox, has already highlighted the domain name for me. It's in a darker text than the rest of the URL. This is a helpful feature, but you can't always rely on your browser to highlight domain names for you. For example, in my version of Firefox, the browser does not highlight the domain name for the URL associated with a hyperlink. So let's practice finding the domain name in this hyperlink. First, we'll ignore the http colon slash slash bundle at the beginning. Then, starting at the far left of the remaining URL, we scan right until we encounter a slash. Then we count back two periods, one period, two periods. The material between the first slash and that second period back from it is the domain name. Let's take a look at a couple more examples where the web designers use some different URL conventions. Here's the homepage for Iowa State University. This URL makes it very easy for us to ignore the HTTP colon slash slash bundle at the beginning because there just is no such bundle here. We would begin on the far left of the URL and scan right until we encounter a slash. But for this URL, there are no slashes. If there isn't a slash, just scan over to the end of the URL. Now count back two periods. One period, two periods. The material between the end of the URL and the second period back from it is the domain name. Let's look at one more example. Here's the homepage for longurl.org. As we just saw, when there is no http colon slash slash bundle at the beginning of the URL, we just start at the far left side of the URL. 
then we scan right until we encounter a slash. Then we count back two periods. One period, and uh-oh, there is no second period here. If there is no second period, just stop when you run out of material entirely. In this case, the material between the first slash and the beginning of the URL constitutes the domain name. Okay, now it's your turn. I'm going to show you four web pages, and based on the URLs, you're going to determine which one is trustworthy. We're going to assume that the domain name iastate.edu is a trustworthy domain name, and that's because it is in real life. Here are the four web pages, and here's the domain name that you're looking for. Pause the video now and find the page with the correct domain name. Unpause whenever you're ready. Did you find it? Let's check. The first thing you must do is ignore the http colon slash slash bundle at the beginning of the URL. Then, starting at the far left of the remaining URL, scan right until you encounter the first slash. Now count back two periods. One period, two periods. The material between the first slash and the second period back from it is the domain name. So in this case, the trustworthy web page is the one on the bottom right. Let's do another exercise. Let's imagine that you bank online at something called westvalleybank.com. Now, in this case, we're using a fictional URL. I'm not aware of any real westvalleybank.com. But pretending that it is real, which of the following web pages uses that domain name? Pause the video for a moment while you figure it out. Did you find it? Let's check. The first thing you must do is ignore the http colon slash slash bundle at the beginning of the URL. Since this URL doesn't have such a bundle, you can just start at the far left. Now scan right until you encounter the first slash. Now count back two periods. One period, two periods. The material between the first slash and the second period back from it is the domain name. In this case, the trustworthy web page is the one on the top right. I want to look at one more problem that you might encounter when you're trying to read URLs. There are services called URL shorteners that take long URLs and condense them down into shorter ones. TinyURL is an example of a popular URL shortener. It can take a long URL and shorten it down to a much shorter string of letters. These shortened hyperlinks are good for web and mobile messenger apps that limit the length of your messages. But the problem with shortened URLs is that you can't tell where they lead. The domain name of this URL is tinyurl.com. So we do know that tinyurl is going to redirect us somewhere, but we don't know where to. So maybe you think that this message is fishy because maybe your dad doesn't usually use the acronym OMG or because he doesn't usually use exclamation points. How can you investigate this link without clicking on it? Now, let's assume for the moment that for some reason you can't get a response from your dad, so you can't just ask him about it. You can convert shortened URLs into a readable format if you expand them in a URL expander. LongURL.org is an example of a relatively popular URL expander. Just copy and paste the shortened URL into the URL expander and click the expand button. The URL expander will display the full URL and you can find the domain name. In this case, the domain name is from a trusted domain, isualum.org so we know that it's safe to click on the link. All right, that's all I have for you on reading URLs. In the next lesson, we'll talk about some of the social threats that we face online.